On this episode of Eat, Sleep, Drive, we are talking about the legendary Toyota Land Cruiser, specifically the 100 series generation, and I'm gonna to explain to you guys why the 07 is the best model year from that generation. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Eat, Sleep, Drive. And yes, it's a video about the legendary Toyota Land Cruiser. You guys have seen it on my channel before, but I wanted to do a more in-depth sort of maybe buyer's guide, you could say, to the different changes from model year to model year from the 100 series Land Cruiser. Now, the 100 series Land Cruiser was produced in the US at least from 98 to 2007. So those are the years that we're talking about, but there were some pretty significant changes in between those dates. And I get a lot of questions on my channel because I have a lot of Land Cruiser content on people asking me, you know, why should I buy this one over this one? What does this year have that this other year doesn't have? And we're going to clear all of that up today. I'm gonna to be going over all the major changes from 98 to 2007 and ultimately explain why the 07, in my opinion, is the best one and the one to get. Now, if you guys wanna see the episode where I picked this car up, I went out west and I bought it and then I drove it home, I'll put a link in the description and on the video for you guys to check it out and see that whole journey. It's a pretty good video. I'm a little biased, obviously, but let's dive into all the details on the different model years for this car. So much bird crap on this thing. Now let's start with the easiest comparison and that is engines. Everyone wants to know what engine is in your vehicle specifically from model year to model year, right? Well, all 100 series Land Cruisers had the 4.7 liter V8 engine. And this was a departure from the six cylinder that the 80 series had, which was the generation before. The 80 series is great incredibly capable off-road vehicle. However, the engine definitely held it back a bit. And when you put big tires on those things, they're just dogs. They don't have any power and they can't hardly get out of their own way. So the V8 was a huge improvement for the Land Cruiser. And as I mentioned, the 100 series, they all have 4.7 liter V8s, at least in the US. Now what separates this one from the earlier ones is that in 06 and 07, they gave this a power bump. This has 275 horsepower, as opposed to all the earlier cars had 235 horsepower. So in 2006, 2007, this engine got variable valve timing and a 40 horsepower power increase. Now let's move on to the second biggest difference, in my opinion, of all the model years of the 100 series Land Cruiser, and that is the transmission. They all came with an automatic transmission, which is totally fine for an off-road vehicle. Now, the 98 to 2002 had a four-speed transmission. In 2003 and all the subsequent later models, they got an upgraded five-speed transmission, which, you know, the Land Cruiser, if it's known, not known for one thing, it's fuel economy. It gets absolutely terrible fuel economy. But I will say that the five-speed transmission definitely helps with fuel economy. On my trip back from Colorado, I was seeing upper teens fuel economy, and that's something that in my old, uh, year 2000 Land Cruiser that I had, I never saw more than 14 miles to the gallon. So definitely the five-speed transmission makes a big difference in fuel economy. It also just seems to shift and ride better. 03 or later has the five-speed transmission. Keep that in mind. Obviously 07 has it. Part of the reason I picked this one. Moving on to our next big change from model year to model year, the later cars had what's called active height control, AHC. And basically what that was, was a hydraulic system that would let you raise and lower the car on the move, which I think sounds pretty cool. Uh, you know, in theory is a really good idea. You can see all the applications where that would be awesome, especially off-roading. But in practice, uh, a lot of people don't prefer it. A lot of people prefer the fixed suspension. And that's just because the fixed suspension is less complicated cheaper to service. If, if the active height control fails, if the hydraulic system fails on your car, you're stuck. Like you're stuck wherever you are. And a fixed suspension for the most part doesn't really fail. So a lot of people change out the AHC systems for just a regular fixed suspension. Now, all the cars from 98 to 2005 had a regular fixed suspension as far as Land Cruisers go. In 06 and 07, it became an option for active height control. 
And part of the reason I picked this 07 is because it did not have active height control. And I'll show you guys inside, the way you can tell if it has it or not, you can look at the gauge cluster. If there is a setting for height, like low, high, whatever, you know it has AHC. If it doesn't have that, it doesn't. Once again, part of the reason I picked this 07 without it, which is kind of rare, a bit of a unicorn, is that it had a fixed suspension, which is simpler, and in my opinion, better. Now, unfortunately, not everything got better with age. There was one thing that, in my opinion, was better in the older cars than it is in the newer cars. And that is what is under here, and that is the rear locker. In 98 and 99, these cars came factory with a rear locker. Uh, if you're not familiar, rear locker refers to a locking differential, which ensures that in the case of slippage, both wheels will be spinning as opposed to just one. And that is obviously preferred for off-roading. It's way better for traction. So in 98, 99, it came with a button that you could press where you could lock the rear differential, which is quite nice. In 2000 and beyond, uh, Toyota introduced A-Track, which was their, they were moving away from a mechanical implementation of the rear locker, which the 98 and 99 had, and went to basically something where they used the ABS to brake not break as in like break something, but to stop one of the wheels from spinning to try and get traction to another wheel. So it, it was kind of like torque vectoring. You've seen like on a lot of new cars, like the Fiesta ST, like front wheel drive cars that have an open diff. Well, they'll break one wheel in an effort to try and get traction to the other. It's the same concept. So in actuality, that system works pretty well. There's a lot of videos online you can check out where it is in action, but end of the day, it's still not quite as good as the rear locker. So keep that in mind. If you want the ultimate Land Cruiser for off-roading in the 100 series, maybe you should look at a 98 or a 99, or you could just add one aftermarket in these cars. It's really 10 one, half dozen the other. One thing that I would consider though, is that the 98, 99 cars are roughly nine years older than this car. Think about what you were doing nine years ago. Um, you know, the shape you were in or whatever it is, nine years is a long time for a car to be on the road. This car has been on the road nine years less. That's part of the reason that I think it overcomes, along with the other things like the engine transmission, it overcomes being better than the 98, which has the superior rear locker. Now, the last thing that I'll talk about from all the changes model year to model year are the niceties of the later cars. And what I mean by niceties are things like in 2003, they introduced this multifunction uh, touchscreen display where you can control things like the uh, HVAC, the audio, you get things like voice activated GPS navigation, um, you get this power telescoping wheel, you get side curtain airbags. So a lot of stuff that just brings this car sort of more into the 21st century that you wouldn't have on some of the older ones. The older ones were very rudimentary, which is fine, but in a car that is this expensive new, uh, you, you definitely want some of those niceties. Also in 2004, the car got Bluetooth. These are things to keep in mind when you're on the hunt for yours. Do you need them or do you not? Like I said, 2003 was kind of that turning point when they really started to integrate some of this other stuff. But if you're okay with not having that stuff, some of the older cars might be okay for you. Well guys, that's basically it for all the big stuff, the big changes from model year to model year on these cars. Keep in mind that there are a ton of little changes that happen from 98 to 2007 with these cars but this video would be like days long if I went into detail on every single one. I've really just tried to hit the big ones that people consider when it comes to buying these cars. For example, you know, this has, the 06, 07 has LED taillights, which is nice, but I wouldn't buy this car over another one just because it has LED taillights. You see what I'm saying? So there are a lot of things like that. We've covered the big ones. So at the end of the day, it really boils down to what your budget is and what you want to do with the car. If you're in overlanding, uh, you know, when you modify a car for overlanding, it tends to add a lot of weight. Bumpers are heavy, they're steel typically. And you know, maybe you're doing some towing or something like that. You should definitely look at the 06 or 07 because you get that power bump. You know, 40 horsepower goes a long way when it comes to towing. As opposed to if you don't quite have the budget, Maybe you could look at an older one, or if you want one that is maybe specifically capable for 
doing some off-roading, not so much overlanding, where you just want the most capable 100 series Land Cruiser, you should probably go with a 98 or a 99 just because it has the rear locker from factory. A-Track is good, but it's not, there's really no replace, uh, no replacement for a rear locker. So you guys just got to keep that in mind. These 06 or 07 ones are very expensive on the market. They're very desirable because of all the reasons that we've talked about today. But don't be afraid to buy an older one as long as it's been well maintained. These cars run forever. This car has 260,000 miles on it, which is a ton. They're expensive new. And when cars are expensive new, it typically means that the owners have the resources to be able to maintain them. So if you find a one owner car that has 300,000 miles, but it has a laundry list of service records, go for it, man. If it's a good price and it's rust free, go for it. That's my biggest suggestion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I know you will because it's the YouTube comments section. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you want to follow me in between episodes, you can check me out on Instagram at Eat Sleep Drive TV. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. We'll see you next time, guys.